welcome and thank you very much everyone in this video i'm going to show you how to run multiple linear regression model in spss and as you know spss is a statistical package for social science uh, in this channel not just the spss but also how to use um, uh, starter for data analysis purpose is um, uh, covered and uh, you can find a uh, content is in relation to data usage and there are also content is about research, research methodology and other content is in my YouTube channel. So uh, subscribe to my channel and be part of uh, this channel to learn from each other. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, for today, uh, I'm here to show you how to run a multiple linear regression model. Uh, in SPSCS uh, uh, software. Uh, before, before we get into uh, the uh, analysis um, work, let me tell you something about a multiple linear regression model. And uh, when we use a multiple linear regression model, what are the assumptions that uh, should be um, uh, a shoot in the course of running a multiple linear regression model. In fact, I will not operate every uh, assumption, but I will just tell you what is to be fulfilled while uh, we, we run a multiple linear regression model in SPSS. And here I have a sample data set. Um, this is um, a variable um, window of uh, the SPSS uh, interface. Let me switch to the uh, data view. And uh, as you see uh, here, I have a data. Um, that uh, was collected on um, weight, okay, body weight of uh, uh, the steady participant, it's the type of diet that is frequently consumed by the participant, the height of the participant, the gender of the participant, and uh, whether or not the um, participant consumes um, alcohol. Okay, those are the variables uh, on which a data was collected. And here I designed the variables into the SPSCS variable view a window like this okay here you can see the uh, weight and diet height gender alcohol and uh, here at the levels let me expand and the uh, weight of the steady participant uh, the type of diet frequently consumed by the steady participant height of the participant gender of uh, the steady participant uh, the participant consumes alcohol okay it is a statement uh, to which uh, the uh, participant will uh, uh, reply yes or no and here you can see the values of uh, the value levels of um, the uh, each um, uh, variable each categorical variable okay because uh, continuous variables uh, you know have no categories uh, they are not defined in categories and here uh, it, the, the diet okay is a meat and vegetable um, here gender male and female and uh, with regard to alcohol consumption and yes or no those are the variables now our interest is uh, to uh, predict weight from the independent variables uh, our interest is to use a weight okay, body weight of the steady participant as a dependent variable and predict it from the um, diet height gender and alcohol okay to see how uh, this uh, independent variables uh, impact the weight of uh, the body weight of uh, an individual okay uh, of, of the participant of the steady participant okay uh, these are the samples and the samples are the, the here are, as you see we have um, uh, 60 participants of the study and they are samples taken from um, the population once the model run then the a steady uh, result will be uh, generalized to the population and uh, uh, to run multiple linear regression uh, model we have to go to the analyze okay analyze um, uh, option in the SPSS um, menu bar and uh, we come down okay we come down to the uh, regression option and we go for uh, linear okay linear and uh, click on it and then because i was working let me reset let me reset and uh, to to the dependent um, box okay to the dependent variable box uh, let me move um, weight of the st steady participant and then we want to uh, predict the weight of the steady participant 
based on this four um, uh, independent variables. This is a independent variable, and uh, the f those four are uh, the independent variable. But let me leave um, this the first variable, the tight, and just uh, take those variables. And uh, mind you, what makes um, a regression model a multiple is that uh, the number of uh, uh, the independent variables. If the number of the dependent variable is just one then uh, that is not a multiple linear regression model multiple linear regression model is a model wherein there is um, a, a single dependent variable and uh, more than one independent variables okay here uh, we have the um, we have a single dependent variable which is a weight of the steady participant and uh, we have a height of uh, the steady participant and we have a gender of the steady participant and uh, we have um, uh, the alcohol uh, consumption data of the steady participant there are uh, three independent variables and this three the existence of the three independent variables make the uh, model multiple okay that is why we call um uh, why we call it a multiple linear regression model okay therefore the, the the basic requirement for a model to be a multiple linear regression model is that it has to have um, more than a uh, one uh, uh, independent variables okay independent and there are also other assumptions such as a normality um, you know a normal distribution of data normal distribution of data means the weight okay the weight is a um, is a dependent variable and there are values in the weight okay uh, the weight is um, measured in terms of a uh, uh, kilogram and uh, this data the data of the weight variable has to be uh, normally distributed over the group of uh, the uh, categorical independent variables for example this is gender is a categorical independent variable and it has within itself there are two groups female groups uh, female group and um, a male group then um, the uh, weight data okay the weight data the distribution of the weight data over the uh, male group and the female group uh, should be uh, normally distributed should be normally distributed it should make a pale shape i will show you okay how we show you how to run how to test the normal distribution of data and there should be also um, a homogeneity of variance because they should not be outlier in the data of um, the weight those are the assumptions and i will show you in another video how to uh, test the assumptions of the uh, multiple linear regression model in this data i have already cleaned the data uh, and i have checked it um, the, for uh, these assumptions so let us continue once we move the variables from uh, the um, left side to the to, from the right to the left okay to the dependent and the independent uh, boxes then we have to go for the statics um, uh, option and uh, we click on it and then here are many uh, options available for us but uh, estimate is already checked and uh, by default check it the model fit already check it and we can also check for descriptive statics to appear so that we can include in our study uh, data presentation and analysis the descriptive um, uh, the descriptive um, result and uh, a risk here change we can also include but uh, it depends on our interest all this uh, we can understand but um, the, the, the estimate is the model fit and the descriptive is at the major ones uh, so let us uh, focus on them and uh, then uh, click on OK. Um, These are OK. There are also plots. If we, if we want to uh, generate the output in plots, then we can uh, uh, we can also go uh, for this and uh, histogram. If we, we want a histogram, if we want a, uh, a normal probability plot, then we can write uh, in our here is not our. Uh, interest and the, the option to um, skip and then let us click on OK. Okay, let us click on OK and uh, SPSS will generate the result in tables and uh, we will um, uh, interpret the uh, data in the table. Okay, uh, if we you know for example you know here um, uh, select a histogram and normality probability and here we if we go for uh, X Y. Um, uh, plot is then the uh, SPSS will generate uh, many uh, tables and um, the here it is not our interest but uh, let us focus on uh, the um, tables that are you know mostly required to be included in a research paper and uh, let us click on OK because we have um, uh, finished.
here you know um, the tables generated just are the major tables that the SPSCS yes, uh, generate for us in the course of running um, um, multiple linear regression uh, model in the correlation okay it has also generated a correlation uh, table but let us here uh, see uh, the descriptive okay the weight of uh, the steady participant uh, the weight of the steady participant uh, okay the average the average weight of the steady participant is is um 59.97 it is uh, virtually a 60 kilogram okay 60 kilogram the standard division is nine and uh, the, uh, the the sample is that we run a uh, um, model on is um is uh, they are 60 okay the samples we have uh, in our uh, data set is 60 and the height of uh, the steady percent the average height is 1.6 um, uh, meter and um, the gender either this here you know sometimes this is a nominal variable but, uh, and uh, we uh, we represented uh, them with uh, let me we, let, we represented the gender uh, here as you see zero um, represent is a male and um, you know what represents is female and it doesn't uh, make sense uh, to interpret the uh, mean value of uh, the gender variable and the participant consumes alcohol here also it is uh, just a nominal variable it is a um, you know a nominal variable here as you see in the data set uh, we uh, gave it uh, one uh, represent is yes the participant consumes um, alcohol and uh, no uh, two, two uh, represent is no that uh, the participant is not consuming um, uh, alcohol so it doesn't give any sense uh, to, uh, to to interpret the mean value of uh, just two variables gender and the participant consume alcohol so we skip here are the interest okay here is the interest uh, in uh, descriptive statistics uh, values of uh, the weight of the steady participant and height of uh, the average height of the uh, steady participant then correlation you can here see um, the correlation between the weight of uh, the steady participant and the weight of the steady participant where the, you know the correlation between the same variable is perfect and it is one and here uh, the height of uh, the uh, steady participant and the weight of the steady participant are correlated and the, the gender of uh, the steady participant and uh, the weight of uh, correlated and uh, the participant uh, consume alcohol and uh, <coughs> weight of um, this are correlated and when you um, run correlation uh, alongside the multiple linear regression you find uh, uh, the cor correlation value like this the present correlation uh, like this and then you can see here the uh, significance level the p-value the significant the significant the significant and uh, there are also you know the correlation statics is uh, between the independent variable variables themselves and it's not our interest what we uh, should be interested in is the uh, variable uh, is the dependent variable is a correlation with the independent variable okay the pairwise are correlation between the dependent and dependent variable let us um, skip to the important um, uh, tables and the, the important tables in this um, uh, model result is a model summary okay the more in the model summary here there is an um, r uh, R um, value and there is R square, there is adjusted R square and the standard era and R tells us it is um, you know um, a correlation coefficient okay this is a, a multiple co co correlation coefficient multiple correlation coefficient in a sense the uh, three the three independent variables combined okay all together how they are correlated with the dependent variable Okay. how much to what extent the three variables combined together are correlated with the uh, dependent variable in our case in our case the we have say variables height of the uh, participant gender of the participant and uh, uh, the alcohol consumption of the participant uh, alcohol consumption status of the participant and the three variables combined together this r value this r statics tell us Thus, uh, thus three variables combined together uh, to what extent they are correlated and the, the, here we, you can see 
the, there is a strong, a statistically a strong and significant uh, correlation between the uh, dependent variable, the weight, uh, the body weight of uh, the steady participants, and the three uh, independent variables combined together. And uh, the R-square, okay, the R-square statistics, uh, tells us the variation in the dependent variable that is due to the independent variables. Okay, the independent variables. The independent variables are loaded into the model. Okay, uh, be before the before the introduction of the independent variables into uh, the model, the independent variable. Um, the existence of in, uh, just independent variable is called um, you know uh, a, you know a zero model okay a zero model zero model because uh, the all the dependent variables independent variables are zero they they are not introduced and that is a, a base model okay the, only the existence of the dependent variable is called a base model there is no independent variables but once the independent variables are loaded into the model then it is expected that they should uh, uh, give um, they should give variation okay they should produce variation in the dependent variable and these are rescuer statistics tell us uh, you know the percentage of the variation of the dependent variables values around the mean Due to the variation in the dependent variables, okay. Due to the variation in the height of the participant, due to the variation in the gender of the participant, due to the variation in, uh, in the alcohol consumption status of the participant, the um, the dependent variable, the weight, the body weight of uh, the participant is uh, uh, varied uh, 68.7 percent. Okay. Therefore, this arrescia tells us the variation in the dependent variable due to the variation in the dependent in the independent variables okay therefore it tells us the variation the extent of the variation it means that to what extent okay, to what extent the independent variables explain the uh, the dependent variable to what extent the independent variables the height of the participant, the gender of the participant, and the participant is alcohol, alcohol consumption status. To what extent uh, they explain the dependent variable? And here, as you can see, the R square is 68.7. Therefore, uh, in other words, it means 68.7% uh, of the dependent variables um, variation is explained by the three independent variables included in this model. And the rest about six set one okay about set one uh, point um, uh, one three okay variation of the dependent variable is um, uh, not explained it means that there are other models that we need to uh, no there are other uh, independent variables that we need to load into the model so that the uh, model uh, prediction capacity will be improved okay only 68.7 percent it is good statistics uh, that was ex uh, 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 explained by the independent variables and uh, the uh, the division of the percentage from 100 okay to the 68 shows that there is a, a, a virtually a 61 okay there is a, a 61 percentage that is uh, left for other variables uh, to explain okay for other variables to explain so we can uh, load other independent variables into the model and uh, uh, keep on uh, predicting the dependent variable from the independent variables then adjusted r square uh, is another statistics and uh, usually it is less than the r square okay it is less than the r square and then this it adjusts r square for standard era okay the variation in the standard era Okay. and the variation in the uh, dependent variable the variation the normal variation in the dependent variable um, compared to the variation uh, of the standard era therefore it adjusts for uh, standard era and here as you can see it is less than r square and it is uh, 67 percent which is a good and um, another table that uh, that we find in the course of running multiple linear regression model is the ANOVA table and this ANOVA table you know um, 
Uh, you can um, uh, go and uh, refer in uh, Google in, in, in statistical books how to calculate uh, uh, the um, uh, sum of scales and residual is a regression. You know, there are calc mean scale, there are calculations, but uh, here we are not interested because statistical software, whether it is SPS or SPSCS, or whether it is um, uh, Stata, okay, they calculate the this statistics instantly without any effort uh, without manual um, uh, effort uh, therefore our our focus is here is not uh, just about how uh, this calculation uh, yield this result uh, how the calculation uh, yield this result but our interest here should be how to interpret this uh, table and what does it tell us okay and this table and over table uh, tell us the overall uh, fit of the model. Okay, is the model significant? Okay, is the model significant regardless of um, the uh, value of R, regardless of the value of R square, regardless of the value of uh, uh, the adjusted R square. You know, even though the R square shows that the uh, you know there is a, a strong correlation between the dependent independent variables and the dependent variable even though the uh, r square sh tells us that the variation in the dependent variable is uh, is highly um, due to the independent variable's variation then this ANOVA table will tell us whether the whole model okay the whole model is significant or not and uh, here as you can see we go for uh, here we have to see the f test okay, the features test and the p value and the p value is less than 0 0.05 and this tells in turn to us that the overall model the overall multiple linear regression model that we run on the dependent variable and uh, given the dependent independent variables is significant okay therefore if we have a significant fit of the model in the ANOVA table, we have to proceed to uh, to interpret the coefficient table. If the model is not significant, then there is a problem in our data. We have to go back and check or we have to uh, stop here and uh, uh, try another uh, model. Okay, another model. Uh, or we have to go for logistic regression model or, or, or other uh, options we have to go for because um, if, if if the model is not um, the if the overall fit of the model it means that the model doesn't fit into the data that we have on our hand therefore uh, this uh, table is very important to continue with the model or stop continuing with the model and uh, here uh, because uh, we have uh, a significant overall model overall fit of the model uh, we have to uh, proceed to the coefficient table and here in the coefficient table uh, it, uh, there are um, important uh, important uh, results. Okay, important results. And here you can see that the height of uh, the participant, the gender of the steady participant, and the participant consume uh, alcohol. Okay, the, or the consume uh, the whether or not the um, participant consumes um, alcohol. And uh, you know here what we have to do is. Just we have to go for the this column, the significance column, the p-value, the p-value column, and the, the p-value column tell us um, this is a constant, and this is a constant, and the constant um, constant in the model uh, we are not uh, interested in interpreting it, but let me tell you what uh, the, what does it uh, represent. Uh, the uh, constant uh, represent is. Uh, that in case the independent variables are zero, in case the independent variables are not, uh, uh, you know, loaded into the model, okay, this would have been uh, the uh, result. Okay, this would have been the result if the coefficient of uh, the value, uh, the coefficient of the height, the coefficient of the gender, the coefficient of the participant is zero. Okay, then. This will be the, the dependent variable will be equal to this uh, coefficient, and it will it is t value will be this, and it is um, uh, significance level will be this, and so you know this is enough. If I uh, you know told you that much about constant is enough.
But here, let us focus on the independent variables. Uh, the height of the participant, look, the significance level, it is um, less than, less than uh, it is 9%, it is less than 10 And in social science, it is uh, possible to extend the uh, alpha value, okay? The alpha value to 10%, to uh, the extent of error, the extent of making uh, type 1 error, the extent of uh, uh, wrongly rejecting the true null hypothesis to a 10 percent and uh, since it is less than 10 here uh, it is uh, significant because uh, uh, you know so we can say that uh, the height of the steady participant can statistically significantly predict is the uh, dependent variable um, here gender okay, here you find that uh, uh, the p-value is uh, 0, 0, 0. 0.000 then it means that the null hypothesis is rejected and that there is a statistically significant relationship between the gender of the steady participant and the weight body weight then it means that uh, it means that uh, the body weight can be uh, statistically significantly predicted from the gender of the steady participant and here uh, the uh, steady participant is uh, consumption of alcohol alcohol consumption status is um, is uh, statistically significantly predicting uh, the uh, body weight because uh, you know here the p-value is less than uh, 0 0.05 it is less than 10 percent okay because we have extended the error term uh, the error uh, level uh, to 10 percent therefore the proportion of error to 10 percent therefore it is within a significant level it means that uh, all the variables that we included all the independent variables that we included to predict the dependent variables are statistically significant are statistically significant and mind you how we can interpret this result how we can interpret this result then the height of the participant let us start from the height of the participant and uh, it will give you you know a major clue so uh, uh, listen carefully height of the participant is you know a continuous variable height is a continuous variable continuous variable means it is measured in terms of natural number it is measured it is not about uh, it is not like a gender because in gender there are uh, uh, two groups two responses male and, uh, male, male and the female and we represent it here let me show you in the uh, in the variable view here, uh, gender, we represent it 0 okay, for male and we represent it 1 for <coughs> female. And they are, uh, sorry, uh, they are um, numbers, okay, 0 and 1 are numbers. But here, they don't give uh, the uh, meaning of uh, uh, the meaning, the numerical meaning that we attach to 0 and 1. Here, what they play is just a nominal role. They play just a representation role. Zero represents male, and one represents female. It doesn't mean that males are less than female, or females are greater than um, male. Okay, that is not the case. Therefore, they are just a nominal. But in case of uh, height, let, let me show you here in the data view. Height is uh, uh, measured in terms of kilo, uh, um, kilograms and 50 kilograms, 55 kilograms, 48 kilograms. You know, the numbers have um, greater than or less than meaning, a natural number. They, they give us the, uh, you know, the natural meaning of numbers, okay, the natural meaning that we attach to uh, numbers. So that makes it uh, uh, you know, a continuous variable or a scale variable. If a variable is measured by a natural number, then it is called um, a category no no a continuous variable it is called a scale variable okay a discrete variable here uh, gender okay is zero is represented the responses are male and female they are represented by zero and one then there's a nominal categorical nominal variable categorical nominal the same thing is true here if uh, the let me show you the variable view. Uh, if uh, uh, the uh, participant consumes alcohol, then he has to reply uh, yes, and uh, his uh, yes uh, response is uh, represented by one. And if he um, if he if he doesn't uh, consume um, if he doesn't consume alcohol, then he uh, answers no, and uh, no is to be is represented by uh, uh, by two. And th here it. Uh, it is not uh, about uh, greater than or less than one and the two plays here just a nominal or representation role. 
so this alcohol the variable alcohol is still a nominal variable it is a, a nominal variable okay it is a nominal variable and it is numbers are not the natural numbers the numbers are just the nominal um, numbers that represent um, uh, you know uh, responses of yes or no then uh, what uh, we make from this nominal and um, what we make uh, from this to this height Okay, you know, I know I, I, I exemplified a continuous variable uh, from weight, but uh, the same thing is true here in in the case of height. Height is uh, um, measured in terms of um, a meter. Okay, it is one meter and fifty centimeter, one meter and sixty centimeter, one meter and fifty five centimeter, one meter and sixty five centimeter. Uh, it is a, in terms of natural numbers, and it it is a continuous variable. Okay, it is continuous variable. This continuous variable and uh, you know understanding the uh, variables in terms of vari in terms of a continuous and categorical variable will help us uh, in interpreting the results of uh, the uh, multiple linear regression model how here we go and see it look here at the height of the participant the height of the participant, as I have uh, told you, it is uh, uh, measured in terms of cent in terms of a uh, meter. Okay, one meter uh, sixty centimeter, one meter seventy centimeter, one meter fifty five centimeter, like that. And here, when we interpret the the, the result of uh, uh, the result of the significant independent continuous or scale variable in multiple linear regression model, what we have to do is that we have to interpret like that uh, we have to interpret uh, by saying uh, for example a 10 centimeter increase a unit increase you know basically we say a unit increase in the height of the participant increases the uh, body weight of the individual by 14 kilogram okay it can be in terms of 10 it is it is based on our interest uh, based on our measurement we know how what we measured then we can say a one meter okay, uh, let me say a one meter increase in um, in the height of an individual causes a 14 kilogram increase in uh, the um, weight body weight of an individual or we can say um, 10 centimeter increase in the height of uh, the uh, of the individual causes a 14 kilogram increase in the body weight of that individual okay uh, it depends whether we say it 10 uh, centimeter when we uh, whether we say 50 whether we say one meter it depends on how we uh, want to uh, uh, to articulate it and uh, this is how Okay, how we interpret the categorical, how we interpret the continuous, continuous or a scale variable in, in in multiple linear regression model or in linear regression. Okay, linear regression. We say a unit increase. Okay, a unit increase in this variable makes causes increase in this. Okay, because we are predicting. Okay, we are predicting an increase of um, a something from a, a, a given variable from another variable therefore it means that we we, we can say a 10 centimeter increase in at uh, the height of uh, the individual increases the um, increases the weight the body weight of the individual by 14 kilogra kilograms and uh, how we could say that uh, it increases the kilograms here we have to uh, focus on the uh, side of uh, the uh, coefficient okay the coefficient if the sign is if it is positive then we say that the uh, change in the independent variable causes increase in the dependent variable what if it is negative if it is negative then we say that a unit increase in the independent variable uh, causes a decrease in the dependent variable in this much okay for example if the, let us say this is a negative 14 and then we can say that a unit increase in the independent variable uh, causes a decrease of uh, the, the uh, body weight of the individual by 40 degrees okay therefore therefore this is how we can uh, uh, interpret the uh, 
result of the continuous or scale variable in multiple linear regression model. Let us proceed. Let us proceed to the uh, gender of the steady participant. And mind you, here we are talking about different things. We are talking about different things. Um, the height of uh, the participant, as I have said, is a continuous variable. But what you, when you come to the gender of the participant, things change, and you know the variable gender become a categorical variable. A categorical variable with which has two groups: male group and female group. Okay, there is a you know a female group on one hand. There is a male group on one hand. But if you have uh, two groups, then how is that you gonna? Interpret the result is a question that we must address and let me show let me take you to the variable uh, view of uh, this um, uh, uh, gender Variable here gender and we have um, Zero and one in order when we put it in order zero comes first and the last is one zero one last the last is one and SPSS by default when it generated the result of um, uh, the uh, multiple linear regression model it takes the last the last group as a reference as a reference group therefore when we uh, interpret the result of uh, the uh, of the categorical variable we say uh, male is compared to female okay male is compared to female because female are the last group okay zero comes first and the one is last if we have three uh, groups, let us say zero, one, two, then it will take the third group as a reference group, as a comparison group. So we can compare a zero against two, one against two. But here, because we have a zero and a one only, then we have to uh, take uh, one as a uh, as a reference group, and we say males compared to females. Okay like that so uh, let us go to the result let us go to the result and here since it is significant if it is not significant we skip okay if it is significant if it is less than if it is greater than 10 here if p value is greater than 10 then we have to skip the um we have to skip the interpretation okay because the, the, the two variables are not uh, uh, significantly related okay it means that uh, we cannot predict the uh, result of the dependent variable from the independent variable the two are independent of each other therefore we cannot predict the one variable from another but here it shows that 0, 0.00 it means that the null hypothesis which declares that the two variables are unrelated the two variables cannot predict each other is rejected with sufficient evidence from the data and here it is not automatic but we say that since it is zero zero we could say that the null hypothesis is rejected with hundred percent evidence from the data that the two variables are uh, predicting each other or are related therefore here how we could part uh, how we could um, uh, interpret is that uh, since uh, here let me show you uh, males okay males relative to female we uh, because this comes first and this is the second and the, the, this is the last then we um, the, we take the female group as a reference group and we say uh, male is relative to uh, to female and here as uh, you can see the coefficient is 12.135 and so we could say that uh, we can say that uh, uh, male groups Okay. male compared to female male compared to female has 12 kilogram body weight okay male compared to female has 12.135 kilogram greater than okay greater than males have uh, because this is a, you know this is a model this is a statistical model then this is summarized if it is, if the data is taken from the samples that were drawn from the population this result will be generalized okay for the population and we could say to the population from which uh, the samples are taken that males in that population have 12.13 kilograms greater body weight than a female in that population.
Okay? And here, therefore, it is a refer we interpret when we in when we interpret the categorical variables in the in the multiple linear regression model, we do it by taking a reference group and unless we change it unless we change it in SPSS while we are generating the result we are where while we are giving command to the SPSS memory it by default uses the last okay the last category as a reference uh, category and here let us move on to the third variable which is uh, which is about whether or not the steady participant consumes alcohol and how alcohol can predict the um, body weight of uh, the individual and because uh, here the p-value is less than 0 0.05 it is less than 10 percent we have uh, put uh, the um, the area okay the type 1 area the extent to make a type 1 era at 10% and this is less than 10% it is even less than 5% therefore it means that the two variables alcohol consumption and uh, body weight are statistically significantly related it means then the weight uh, the body weight of an individual can be predicted based on alcohol consumption Okay. it means that here when we are consume, when we are interpreting here look uh, let me show you in the variable view here one two okay one represents yes and two represents one and mind you as I've said it means that we have to take the last uh, group okay one is the first group and two is the second group then the last group is two so we we have to take uh, two as a reference group no as a reference group so we are gonna say a participant is a participant is who reply uh, you know participant is who consume alcohol relative to participants who are not um, consuming alcohol have less weight body weight or have more body weight by this much okay let us get back to the uh, result and look let us uh, focus on the um, let us focus on the coefficient and the coefficient is negative 3.22 okay negative 3.22 it means that um, it means that uh, the steady participant is the steady participant is who consume alcohol okay the steady participant is who consume alcohol uh, have a body weight that is three kilogram less than uh, those who are not consuming uh, those who are not consuming alcohol okay it is a relative okay look here uh, in the variable yeah one is a the one is represented uh, represents the first group and this is the last therefore we could say that you know participants who consume participants who consume alcohol relative to in comparison to household uh, to the participants who are not consuming okay who are not consuming alcohol um, have a three kilogram less weight okay three kilogram weight less than okay less than those uh, who are uh, uh, not consuming therefore it can be you know it is it can be a paradox to the uh, 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 real um, uh, wallet uh, experience but uh, we are exemplifying we are not talking about uh, serious things here and uh, this is how uh, you can um, uh, interpret the uh, result of the multiple linear regression for uh, continuous variable or scale variable and uh, um, the categorical variable if we, you are interested in this channel uh, hit on the subscribe button and become part of it and let us continue to learn from each other thank you uh, very much once again